Louise and I are going to, uh, from Nottingham Museums and Galleries, which is a local authority museum service, and we're a major partner museum um, funded through Arts Council with Derby as a, as a consortium. And we are going to be talking to you today about, well, I'm going to talk to you about, about a bit about the background to the health and wellbeing work that we've done over the last 20 or so years, and then a bit about the context of why we felt we needed to shift our focus. And then Louise is going to talk about a new initiative, the Museum Care Ambassadors, and then we'll round up at the end. So in 2013, we were involved in a, an action research project with four other museums in the East Midlands. Um, this was a project which was focused around the creation of a network of uh, museums and health and social care partners um, to explore the contribution that museums can make to the health and well-being of their communities. And it was funded through the Arts Council. Our particular project in Nottingham was Live Today, Think Tomorrow, and it was about smoking prevalence in Nottingham. Um, we have a particularly high smoking prevalence in Nottingham, particularly amongst um, young people, and it's been identified as one of the major uh, contributors to Nottingham's low life expectancy, obviously linking to death from cardiovascular disease, lung disease, cancer, and so on. So using our extensive John Player and Sons collection, and John Player's was um, a factory in Nottingham mm. until very recently where it, the production has uh, moved over to um, ab abroad. But for many years it was a, a, a very high employer in Nottingham. So we've got a lot of the archive material of marketing and packaging and so on. And so we used that and we worked with young people to talk about the issues of smoking. But it wasn't the project in itself that was the, the, the key thing, that in itself was great, but it was the realisation where as part of this action research and discussing things with other museums that we realised that we had quite an extensive breadth of experience of working in health and well-being over the last 20 years. Um, mental health, physical health, um, disability related health, both learning and physical and age related health. And whilst those projects had had significant positive impacts on the participants, we'd had a fairly unfocused um, and project by project approach, perhaps the nature of project funding, I'm sure people are aware of. And, but with a few exceptions, it rarely led to a kind of sustainable and ongoing relationship with um, a programme to address the needs of, of um, participants. One of the other things we learned through the action research um, was about the five ways to well-being. Quick straw poll, hands up. Are people aware of the five ways to well-being? Few people, few people not. Does anybody else use it in their work? Yes, few people. Um, well, this was new to us in, in 2013. I'm not sure how it passed us by, but it had. Um, but the five ways are founded on the premise that mental health is intrinsic to our health and well-being and a positive state of mind and body. And feeling that you can cope, feeling that you're safe, feeling that you're connected to people, feeling that you're connected to your communities and to the wider world. And so each of these actions, the connect, be active, take notice, keep learning and give, all contribute to the um, well-being in a positive way. So that includes the ability of us to adapt to change, our self-esteem, our cognitive capacity and our emotional intelligence. And another key element for well-being is social participation. Um, and evidence shows that for people of all ages, it's relationships with people that are critical for promoting well-being and acting as a buffer against um, negative or poor mental health. So what we did during that project was we assessed um, our current and our past projects. We looked, looked at which of them was really health and well-being related, and an in incredible number of them were. And we looked at what we thought we did well and what we did less well and where our expertise kind of lay. And we wanted to think particularly about our Nottingham City Museums and Galleries unique offer in terms of the collections that we had, um, the buildings that we have, and we really wanted to embed the five ways to well-being in our planning. Um, one of our vol uh, the volunteer programme, for example, ticked all of the boxes of the five ways to well-being, and Louise will um, speak about that a little bit in, in a moment. So 
why did we need to do anything differently and why was this such a sort of revelation to us? Well, I suppose that we'd been doing things in the way that we'd been doing them for so long. Um, and having that time to reflect made us realise that we needed to do things differently and that our service was changing. It was a time of cuts within the City Council. It was a time when we'd had several of our smaller museums had been closed. Thankfully, they've reopened now with the support of volunteers. But um, we needed to look at how we could be a sustainable museum service. And we need to justify, as you were saying earlier, uh, our existence, really. We needed to make sure that we were relevant to the City Council's priorities so that we weren't an easy target when the next round of cuts came along and that people would say, actually, no, they're doing really good stuff that delivers to these agendas. Um, and we needed to work as efficiently as we could because there were job cuts, you know, um, and if people weren't made redundant, then as people left naturally, they weren't being replaced, so we were fewer in number. Um, the health and well-being strategy priorities for Nottingham are these. I'm not going to read them out, you can, you can see them, but the, the second one is the one that we're particularly referring to um, today. But I will throw out some stats just to give you the context within which we're working. So the City of Nottingham is the 13th most deprived local authority area in England. <laughs> We have intergenerational poverty in Nottingham that leads to a wide number of health-related issues, so poor physical and mental health. And in fact, severe mental health is 35, uh, sorry, severe mental health illness is 35% above the national average in Nottingham. We also have a lower life expectancy than the national average. That's four years um, less for men and two years less for women. And that varies by 10 years across neighbourhoods in Nottingham as well. Almost, um, well, about 80% of adults are considered not active enough for a healthy lifestyle, what's considered a healthy lifestyle. And 39% of Nottingham citizens smoke, which is the biggest single factor to health inequalities, and we're 25 years behind the national average for smoking cessation, which is perhaps not surprising given that we had the players factory and uh, cigarettes was part of the pay packet. <clears throat> um, so this leads to people feeling disconnected from society, leading to isolation, perhaps leading to antisocial behaviour and in some cases crime and substance misuse. So that's the kind of picture, not unlike perhaps other major cities. But Nottingham is an age-friendly city. Um, we've got a partnership of citizens, organisations, both health and arts-related organisations, academics and service providers, who are determined to build an age-friendly future for the city. We have an open arts forum, which is a number of us get together and look at how we can um, embed arts and health work in Nottinghamshire and Nottingham City. And that's where the Imagine programme came from, out of the Open Arts Forum. It's managed by an organisation called City Arts in Nottingham on behalf of the partnership of all those organisations. And it's one of only four um, programmes across the UK to be awarded funding from Arts Council and from the Bearing Foundation for Arts and Older People in Care Fund. And the three-year project um, is about enriching, using the arts to enrich the lives of older people in care, specifically, involving them in the wider community, getting them engaged with people of all ages, and stimulating them to be involved and to access opportunities for self-expression that will help their um, health and well-being. So the Lacey Days project, um, this is the project that we did as part of Imagine. Um, we took inspiration for our extensive lace collection, which, which is a designated collection. Um, you might not be aware that, um, as well as being renowned for smoking, Nottingham was a world leader in lace making during the 19th century, with more than 130 lace factories in operation, and um, the lace market area still has those amazing sort of industrial 19th century buildings. So the curator of costume and textiles introduced the project Lacey Days. We had about 30 older people participants, um, some of whom had dementia. Um, and she took in objects from the collection into Radford Day Care Centre and started discussions and, and, and yeah, having those conversations. That initial collection session was then followed by seven hands-on workshops with creative practitioners. So the participants explored hat making, glove making, lace shoe making. Um, they had conversations with Jim Stacey. He's the owner of the last existing lace making company in Nottingham. 
and he talked about his work as a knitter of lace. Uh, we also had an Afro-Caribbean lady came in and brought African lace and did a demonstration about um, African uh, traditional dress. So some of the outcomes there, it stimulated conversation hugely and the carers in the care setting were, were really surprised um, and pleased with the conversations that were happening. And it stimulated memories of Nottingham's rich heritage. Some of the people, uh, the, some of the participants had been involved in the lace heritage or had relatives who were. And it also prompted them to bring in items from home. So they brought in wedding photographs of wedding dresses, lace, lace wedding dresses. Somebody brought in a lace wedding dress. Somebody else brought in a piece of commemorative um, lace, which was actually almost identical to a piece that we actually have in the collection. So that was really lovely. And we had a community-inspired exhibit that was displayed alongside um, our contemporary textile collection at <coughs> Newstead Abbey in the summer last year. Uh, one of the carers said, the members are still very animated when talking about the Lacey Days sessions and keeping their handmade gar garments in the centre is a good way of reminding ourselves of the fun we had and the memories many cherished. So whilst we'd done numerous projects with older people previously, it was this Lacey Days project, coupled with the timing of the Action Research Project, which really led us to approaching our work with older people in a new way. So uh, with our sites firmly set on uh, the health and wellbeing agenda and looking at the success of previous projects, um, we were looking out for other organisations to work with um, we were initially approached by Nottingham City's adult care services team. Uh, they administer Nottingham City's uh, funded residents in um, residential nursing homes, uh, long short term res and respite care. Um, they wanted to work in partnership to recruit a team of volunteers who could deliver um, creative workshops in the same way that Lacey Days had done. Um, and so the concept of the Museum Care Ambassadors was born. Um, so we started developing the project with these three uh, principles. So adding value, this is an aim of all of our volunteer roles. Um, the volunteers deliver outputs that we wouldn't otherwise be able to. Um, we wanted to ensure that the Museum Care and Ambassadors um, felt that they could engage with an audience um, that we would not otherwise have capacity to fully support. Um, we wanted to en engage with this new audience in a new way with our collections that, and places that they probably wouldn't be able to visit on their own, our museum sites. Um, and we also wanted to look at uh, developing a new volunteer role in, and uh, engaging with new volunteers in a new way. And also we wanted to make it sustainable. Um, it was a, a partnership project, um, but we wanted to, uh, it to be sustainable and ongoing through training um, and finance and marketing and recruitment through the partners. So these were the three partners. So obviously there was us, uh, there was Nottingham Adult Care, um, and then there was Imagine. And this is what each of us obviously gave to that partnership. Um, so we wanted to use museum objects, obviously, to link it to the collections and to link it to the, the places, the museums that we represent. Um, we wanted to give the volunteers training in how to facilitate sessions in care settings um, and developing creative sessions, which not all of them, I'll come on to later, but not all of them would have had experience in doing. Um, we also wanted to ensure that they felt that they were correctly trained in things like safeguarding of adults so that they felt that they... Um, we're going into a, into a setting and understanding how that setting works. Um, and working in a care setting, um, I'll come on to later the background of some of the, the volunteers, but not all of them had worked in a care setting previously. Some of them were from an arts background. Um, and imagine they offered dementia awareness training um, and those links to creative care settings as they, were the, uh, they had lots of links to other organisations that we wouldn't necessarily have. So the next phase was to recruit those volunteers um, and the, the partners were a really key point to that. Um, we, we wanted to ensure that they could use their networks to recruit people that would be interested in an ongoing um, commitment to being a care ambassador um, and that the recruits would be uh, taken on to be shared with uh, a good level of understanding to develop the activities and ideas later on. So we managed to recruit six uh, museum care ambassadors as part of this initial phase. So after they'd had their training from each of the partners, 
Um, by August 2016, the end of the initial training phase, the volunteers had developed three sessions that they could pilot over 2016, so it's summer 2016. Um, the sessions were a view from my seat, this was a creative photography session using objects from the museum handling collection, so the um, participants were guided by the museum care ambassador had a particular interest in photography and using photography um, for well-being and she guided them through how to how to take photographs how to develop them uh, the second session was about holidays so again using handling collection objects to talk about trips that people had or people wanted to take um, and the third session was um, at 1946 at home and the session um, was using domestic objects, toys from the 1940s. And the museum care ambassador that developed this had a particular interest in toys, old toys. Um, so the initial feedback that we had from these sessions after we'd gone in and piloted, piloted them with the participants was overwhelmingly good. Um, and we've know, we know from pre taking our handling objects into care settings and into other settings that people really enjoy it and they engage with it in a different way. Um, and these are some of the comments um, that we've had from participants or group leaders. Um, and I think they give a really good overview of the sort of things that people were saying about how they enjoyed the sessions. But from our point of view, we wanted to consider the impact on the volunteer. Um, so these two of our volunteers. Um, this one here is Robert. Uh, he's Robert's in his early 60s. Uh, he heard about the Care Ambassador's volunteer role through the Nottingham Community and Voluntary uh, Advertisement. Uh, and uh, he also, also volunteered with a local care group. Um, Robert's a former social worker and he has experience of dementia in his own family. Um, and he's the volunteer that had a particular interest in toys. So he wanted to come in and get his hands on a handling collection and try out working with some of the toys. And uh, the lady over there is Hannah. Um, Hannah's 25. She's volunteered with Nottingham City Museums and Galleries since 2014. Um, she's works with our, uh, she volunteers with our young people's group called Illuminate. Um, she's a budding artist herself um, and she, she works with school, uh, school aged children in the arts. But she hasn't had any experience of working with older people um, in new environments. So these are, the, these, are, these are what they've told us about the impact that it has on them, the, the care ambassador's role has had on them. And I think you'll agree, they've both got out of it what they came to us wanting to do. So it's not just the care ambassadors uh, of our volunteers that tell us that volunteering has had a positive impact on them, um, supporting them to feel happier and achieve new things. Uh, these are some results from our 2015-16 volunteer survey that goes out every year. We've got um, around 250 volunteers that volunteer across all of our sites, so we do like to keep in touch with what they're doing and how they're feeling. Um, and I've illustrated in blue how they link in with the um, five ways to well-being that Joe was talking about earlier on. Um, the, the Be Active one is quite interesting. We do have quite a lot of volunteer roles across our sites, uh, a lot of gardening roles across our sites, and that is one of the common things is that they really like to see that big improvement, and it kind of spurs them on to, to go along and, and carry that on. Um, so we wanted a way of showing how the um, volunteering with NCMG can impact on the individual and also show how it supports our heritage sites. So we made a film. Okay, well, my name's Wendy, and I've been working here, it must be three and a half years now, I think. I had newly arrived in Nottingham after the, my husband had retired. I have always volunteered all my life because I just feel I like to give something back to the community in which I'm living. My name's Callum Mulligan. I've been with the, the service for about four years. I started volunteering before I went to uni. I decided that I wasn't confident enough and I didn't have the social skills. I'm Margaret. I'm a volunteer at Newstead Abbey and I've been volunteering here for about six months. I retired about two years ago from a full-time job that I've been doing for like 30 odd years. I really missed not being with people. I used to go to work, see people every day and then you go to retirement and it's like there's nobody. My name is Madge Spencer 
and I have been telling stories and visiting the, the, both the castle and Woolerton Hall for the, nearly three years now. As I've retired, for me, it's a new group of friends, new group of people, new group of interests. My name's Lynn, and I've been working here three years with Wendy. Well, I retired just over three years ago, and I decided I wanted to do something else. So you've still got a routine in your life. My name is Andrew, and I've been here for a total of coming up to three years now. And last month has been in paid employment. Well, when I started here, I had severe confidence issues and anxiety issues. One of yes. the real joys that we get here is how much feedback we get from all the people who pass through here, which is masses on a sunny summer's day. To come to a beautiful place like this once a week is lovely. Being here for so long, I sort of fell in love with the place, really, because it's a gem in the middle of the city. But this castle and Woolerton Hall has helped me to start blossoming. It isn't just for old people, like, there's a real stigmatism about volunteering, especially in heritage sites, it's like 60 plus working in a shop, and it's not at all. It's made me feel more confident because I was beginning to feel depressed and isolated. It boosted my confidence significantly um, in terms of my employability and sort of in social situations as well. I do workshops now and I wouldn't have imagined myself doing any sort of workshop before I started volunteering. It really helped me confidence-wise and like my best friend at the moment I met on my first day of volunteering. I would encourage everyone to volunteer because not only does it get you out doing something, it's a bit of self-exploration really. You might find something that you really like that you never knew before. A lot of the people that are at Newstead in particular are volunteers. Without the volunteers, things wouldn't happen. And there's so much to get involved in. Like, I've gained so much experience. I'm being offered freelance work now, which is amazing. And, I'm, and I've gotten a part-time job because of it. Um, and people often miss the benefits. I would certainly encourage anyone, any age, to to join in because it's a hobby that could become a job. And with the number of volunteers coming here, we've gradually expanded to take over the beds behind us and we are gradually moving our way around the garden. <laughs> yes. We're really fortunate to have a diverse and committed group of volunteers and that really helps to enhance what our service can offer. So without volunteers really, I honestly feel that the heritage landscape would be all the poorer for it. Um, it, that gives you a really good flavour of the sort of overview of what volunteers are doing with us and the impact that it's having on the individual volunteers. Um, just to kind of round off really, um, so what's next? With the Care Ambassadors, we're looking to recruit a new round of Care Ambassadors. Um, so we're, we're hoping to recruit another six that we can buddy up with the ones that we've currently got. Um, so now that they've done the pilots for those sessions, um, we're going to try them again. We're going to make some adjustments, try them again, and then look to develop new ones with the new, new care ambassadors. Um, we're also going to look at how we can te team up the Dementia Friends um, with the Alzheimer's Society and the care ambassadors to see whether they can deliver and become uh, dementia champions um, and deliver training to other volunteers within the service and also to staff within the service so we can make a real partnership there. Um, and we'd also like to ex explore the prospect of doing um, young care ambassadors, so looking at uh, volunteers that could go into preschools and do outreach sessions and handling sessions and, and that kind of thing. Um, we're just about to start filming for an armchair gallery project at Newstead Abbey, which is a very inaccessible um, venue for anybody with any uh, mobility issues. Um, and that will be iPad-based and app-based so that uh, people in care settings can actually visit the museum as it were virtually and it will focus on particular objects as well. But our work with older people is just one element of engaging the harder to reach communities so we'll be looking at the others and looking at how we can address those needs and our focus is very much now on sustainability and programs not projects um, and using that five ways to well-being approach 
will be, will be taken as we further develop our work with, with people from the communities um, to link to the city's health and, and well-being strategy um, and hopefully to get people more people on board as part of the volunteer programme. Thank you.